This instructional companion on the slider crank falls under the major topic, Dynamics and Vibrations, which contains the following five chapters, Properties of Solid Bodies, Kinematics, where this instructional companion gut comes from, Kinetics, Mechanisms and Power Transmission Systems, and Vibrating Systems. The chapter on kinematics covers the many topics shown, in particular relative motion, general plane motion, rotation about a fixed axis which had a instructional companion on the rolling wheel, slider rod, another uh, instructional companion, and slider crank assemblies, the subject of this presentation. Shown here is the typical slider crank assembly, and using the notation in the MERM, uh, this point here is labeled A, B, and over here is D. Point uh, C is used uh, in the MERM as the center of instantaneous uh, velocity, well, or rotation, and that's not a method that we're going to look at here. And uh, in this particular assembly, uh, AB is called the crank, and over here, this is called the slider, hence the slider crank. And connecting the two, as you might imagine using the word, is the connecting rod. This is probably the most famous of the mechanisms in that it contains all of the, the three major parts of 2D motion or general motion. The crank is under pure rotation. B just rotates either clockwise or counterclockwise around point A. So the slider moves left, can only move left and right, so it is in pure translation. And then the connecting rod is in what we refer to as 2D plane motion. It has both translation and rotation, and we have to consider that when we look at the detailed kinematics here, okay? which we're going to do on the next slide. What we're going to do is break up each one of those pieces and look at them separately. Okay, to save YouTube time, I've gone and drawn the, uh, the crank, uh, AB, in which you see uh, that I have shown it as uh, a clockwise rotation. Could be the other way, but we'll know that either in RPM or uh, radians per second. We need, to be, we need radians per second. It's at this particular instant shown. It's some angle theta off the vertical or some other angle that's given. Everything about the crank typically is given. We could have the automobile engine in which uh, we know the slider is, is what we're looking at, but in most of the kinematic problems you would have on the PE exam, uh, you would be given the crank information. Okay, and uh, VB, of course, can only move around in a circle, so it's perpendicular, perpendicular to a line containing um, uh, AB, and its magnitude is uh, VB, R omega, in this case, that's just the length AB, which again you would be given, times omega AB in radians per second. So we know uh, everything about uh, VB, we know it's cosine to the right and minus sine down, so we know everything about the crank. And over on the right, the kinematics of the slider is fairly simple. It can only move uh, left and right. So uh, typically, that's what we're going to be after. That's one of the, uh, the unknowns in the, a typical problem is what is that velocity, both magnitude and direction. And I've just assumed positive. I am trying to figure this out. I think that's probably correct here. Uh, but I just uh, assume positive when I don't know something. Well, what's connecting those two is the connecting rod. So let's see what that looks like. Okay, again, to save YouTube time, I've, I've drawn quite a few things here. First, I've drawn uh, BD, and um, didn't quite get the, the angle of BD such that uh, BB uh, would be parallel to each other. So the velocity at B, uh, should be, these two should be parallel, and we know that. I've assumed uh, counterclockwise. Didn't know which way it was, so I just assumed um, just because it makes the velocity of D relative to B easier to draw. So I just made that. If it comes out negative, it was the other way around. And so what I've really based on is this relative motion equation that we've had before, the velocity of any two points on a rigid body. And what we want is the velocity of D. So the velocity of D is equal to the velocity of B plus the velocity of D relative uh, to B as if B is fixed. And if B is fixed, then uh, D can only move in a circle, either left or right. So essentially what we have is the uh, VDB 
is r omega, and in this case, bd, the length bd, which we know, and then this unknown uh, angular uh, velocity. So we know its magnitude. Uh, we actually, well, at least we don't know uh, omega bd. We also can find its angle phi. That phi is right here. Okay, and that can be gotten from a triangle. Uh, I'm going to draw that here separately, but we can find that angle. All the information is given for it. So essentially, we know all the directions. Again, we knew the, the direction of VB, cosine right minus sine down. Uh, velocity of D is a horizontal only, and the VDB is cosine to the right, sine uh, phi up. So that's all we kind of need. So let's do that here. Let's show you how phi is found. Okay, if we draw this little triangle, uh, it's a scalene triangle, but we can uh, drop a perpendicular, as we say, and what we're looking for is this length here, so that we can use the definition of the cosine of phi as the adjacent of the hypotenuse. Well, this uh, vertical distance right here is merely the uh, cosine, AB cosine uh, theta, which we know. We know AB, we know theta, we know BD, so we can find that for a particular uh, geometry. So, so that's settled. So what's left is, is just to write out the two scalar equations associated with the vector, one in horizontal or x and one in the vertical, and we'll have two equations and two unknowns. So let's do that. So again, to save YouTube time, I've just said, okay, if we look at make positive to the right, uh, our assumption, VD is uh, got only a horizontal, it doesn't have a vertical, so a zero down here. Our VB is right and down, VB cosine to the right, VB sine down. And then our VD uh, relative to B term, which again is uh, equal to the uh, BD times omega BD, so that's hidden in there. Cosine phi to the right, sine phi up. So essentially what you have is two equations and two unknowns. Let's write that out. So essentially, you have two equations and two unknowns, the velocity at D and the angular uh, velocity of the connecting rod, BD. So you could just write these equations, put them somewhere. This solves uh, all of the slider crank problems. Uh, put those in and find out what you need. Okay. Well, uh, you may or may not feel comfortable with that, but there are two special cases that I'd like to show you that uh, you don't want to let them have. They're just too easy. So let's look at those here on the next page. Okay, special case uh, number one is where the slider crank, uh, AB and D over here, AB is vertical, it's a clockwise uh, rotation, 10 radians per second, could have been given in RPM, but we'd have to convert that. Uh, nine inch uh, distance between A and B, the connecting rod is 15 inches long. The question is, what is the velocity of D, both magnitude and direction? Well, let's write out our two equations from the previous page. Going to save YouTube time. I've just written these out. Velocity of d is velocity of b cosine uh, theta plus, and I expanded out here the velocity of d relative to b and put it into its basic terms: b d r omega omega b d. What's unknown is the omega b d cosine phi, and then the other equation zero minus v b sine theta plus b d omega b d sine phi. Well, in this particular case, what we have is theta equals zero. Remember, our angle was from the vertical. So what happens here is this term becomes uh, one. Uh, this term becomes uh, zero. So what happens is, is in the second term here, uh, there's nothing else. Um, uh, BD is not zero. Sine phi is not zero. So what happens with this one is, is that we come out with omega BD is equal to zero. Ooh, okay. And if omega BD is zero, then this term out here goes away. So what we end up with is the velocity of D is just equal to the velocity of B, which we can calculate. That's just equal to uh, AB, omega AB, okay, in which we can put in the numbers. And so I went on and did the save YouTube time, put in the 9 inches times the 10 radians per second. That gives us 90 inches per second divided by 12 to get 7.5 feet per second. We got a positive number, so therefore it is positive to the right. Notice that we didn't have to find uh, the angle phi uh, and all of that. It was just happened uh, naturally. How about that? So don't let them have that one. Now there's another special case. You might see this one coming. 
Okay, special case number two. Well, I'm going to use the same dimensions. I'm going to lay out the uh, slider crank to where AB is horizontal. Again, 9 inches and 15 inches rotating clockwise at 10 radians per second. And if we remember on our assumptions the way we wrote this, uh, our equations out, mega BD is this way. And uh, the question here is going to be, what is that? What is its magnitude and what is its direction? Okay, well, let's write out the, the equations again. Okay, again, to save YouTube time, I've written out the exact same equations. So, well, what do we have here? Well, remember, uh, theta is measured uh, over from there. So theta is equal to uh, 90 degrees. And then uh, phi is me measured back around. So in this case, uh, phi is equal to 90 degrees. So both are 90 degrees. And so what does that do for us? Well, the um, uh, cosine of um, 90 degrees is equal to... Um, zero. Uh, the sine of 90 degrees is equal to one. So we got that. Cosine of phi again is uh, 90 degrees is zero. And down here, sine of uh, 90 degrees is equal to one. So what are we left with? Well, we're left with uh, VD actually comes out to be zero. That's why you didn't really uh, weren't asked for it, although we could. That would be a nice uh, question. And then if we look at this equation and take uh, this to the other side, what we'd have is omega BD. And let's do that. Okay, so the minus of VB goes to the other side. Divide both sides by BD. So we have that. And we'll put the numbers in that we have. And remember, uh, the velocity at B is just equal to R omega, 9 times 10 radians per second. BD is 15. Units cancel, so we're going to end up with our radians per second. If we do the arithmetic, we get uh, 6 radians per second. But what is also important is that we get a positive number, so our direction, our assumed uh, counterclockwise, is correct. I, you know, just, I just put it on there for because um, uh, it fit better. Didn't have any insight, but that works out there. Okay, How about that? Can't let them have that one. Well, again, a uh, slider crank not be, might not be in the common AMPE exam, but it sure might be a, in the, the afternoon. And so, again, uh, not one to let them have. Again, I invite you to visit my website as part of your exam preparations.